all theatre is based upon playing something, staging something which we all agree isn't real, but we perceive it as if though it interacts with the real world so that we can enhance our storytelling capabilities. And this is what this is. It's just um, the flickering candlelight or even the firelight and shadows on the wall when our ancestors told stories in the caves. This is a new form of flickering light. The future of music. How is music and innovation going to work together? Directing an opera without a stage is quite a task and you're facing it. So what's the idea about no stage, no problem? Um, no stage, no problem is a project that I devised as a tutorial of sorts, a webinar for the uh, South African National Arts Festival of this year, which is a virtual festival for the first time because of corona lockdown restrictions. The possibility to stage uh, and for the public to go and see these staged productions uh, was severely hampered by the corona restrictions. And so I thought it would be interesting to work on the idea of not having a physical stage but having a virtual stage. And uh, Umkulu has always tried to democratize the idea of opera, opera going to places where usually it would not be shown in townships where there's no infrastructure like a normal theater with a big lighting rig. And we have always been looking for ways to use musical theater opera to its widest interpretation of what opera can be so that South Africans would have the opportunity to empower themselves with this means of storytelling. And this year, it being a virtual festival, the idea was to think about how a young South African, armed with only a computer that is used to play computer games, can actually build a virtual stage using free tools and using only these free tools to create a believable, realistic environment in which one can set an opera and then send it through digital means, uh, either through the internet or broadcast it in some way, without actually having a physical stage at all. The idea is uh, that even uh, if even I, if I wanted to uh, do a video of myself uh, singing or um, uh, appear appearing on stage uh, like a virtual uh, CV card, I could do it. Uh, but, as, well, starting from the bottom uh, until we have something like you're showing here on, on screen is quite a task, but is it possible? It is a steep learning curve in many of the programs, but it is possible to learn it in an autodidactic way. It is absolutely possible to help yourself with the material available on the internet. There's good documentation by the people that make the games engine, really good documentation. On top of that, thousands of interested developers that build tools for these game engines that share knowledge with each other on the internet. And it's a huge um, collective system in which a newcomer can tap into it. I have a background um, many years working with green screen, blue screen, etc. But I only started working on this games engine idea when Corona happened and uh, I sort of had the vague materialization of this idea. So for me it was a mad rush of learning the tools and um, learning how to do it to actually be able to take South Africans by the hand and show them uh, 
actually following the path that I did, a learning path which certainly is in the, within the reach of anybody who really wants to do it. And the wonderful thing about it is that you don't have to spend a lot of money. The software is absolutely free. And um, it is software that is in no way dumbed down or in no way made less powerful than the software that the Hollywood companies would be using. It's exactly the same software. And up to you making your first three million of revenue, the software company would give you free access to their tool. And I find that's fantastic. And especially for South Africans, if you have a good idea, you can do it. Um, and it's a question of how much of time and uh, interest you can uh, sort of churn up out of yourself um, to, to harness your own possibilities. And I find that's really wonderful. Uh, bringing in the angle of the future of music, um, how to connect it to uh, the art of opera? I mean, we certainly see that this is uh, a surrounding for a video game, but why is it working for something so severe as classic music as well? To put it quite frankly, opera is stylized already. It's stylized stage. And here we are working with a stylized environment. So it's a question of aesthetics. Um, of course, this is not everybody's cup of tea, and people might have a traditional way of wanting to see opera, and this certainly doesn't look in a traditional way. But opera was created to tell a story more efficiently than the spoken word. Opera was created to make a supercharged form of communication of music and the spoken word. And now we're in a situation where many artists want to sing, but they don't have a public, they don't have a stage, and so we are um, ending up with thousands of videos online of people singing in their bathroom or singing on their balcony. And unfortunately, a huge amount of fatigue has set in uh, seeing our colleagues on the balcony and in their bathrooms. And I thought that this, this is another avenue that one can explore. What for me is interesting about it in a uh, philosophical point of view is that all endeavors on the stage is about the intersection of truth and fiction, the intersection of reality and illusion. All theatre is based upon playing something, staging something which we all agree isn't real, but we perceive it as if though it interacts with the real world so that we can enhance our storytelling capabilities. And this is what this is. It's just um, the flickering candlelight or even the firelight and shadows on the wall when our ancestors told stories in the caves. This is a new form of flickering light. And it's a new form of creating a surrounding which would help you to tell a story. Now this project is too um, much a proof of concept. It is not uh, a, a project which is going from A to B in telling the story because it's geared towards um, giving people an entrance into the possibilities of what they can do with free um, assets at their availability. But I think it proves the, um, the idea that if one uh, would work in this way, it's possible to use digital tools to tell a story in a digital age. Um, when people use a normal stage production and then want to digitize that for the digital stage, for the virtual stage, there is an incongruity there. And here um, we still have to work on many aspects and there is a certain incongruity which we have not uh, been able to have a solution for everything, but it is opening up doors um, of having a virtual story in a virtual space. And for me there's a certain logic about that which I find very, very interesting. What is absolutely analog and happening in the moment is what your partner in crime, Sia Bonga Makungo, is doing on stage or uh, in the green room right now. Um, so you are still, in a classical way, a director because you're directing the artist to sing and to, to show his opera. Indeed. Um, uh, in, in what we are doing, the largest process is actually his imagination that needs to be in sync with the imagination required or with the scene. And that's one of the problems if you work in a digital environment, often the artists do not see the environment that they will be in. And this form of virtual production gives the artist the opportunity to see the environment in which he's going to function, and therefore his imagination is also uh, fueled in a way which is uh, on the same track as uh, the viewpoint of the director. And that is something which I think um, is a form of synergy which is always good in any theatre production. Um, you have worked with, uh, well, kind of going this direction um, on stage as, as well, and um, how to make 
working with virtual reality more than a moving uh, wallpaper? The moving wallpaper is already a very interesting way of staging things. Already that is quite a high art. If done correctly, it can be very, very uh, mesmerizing and moving. But we are trying to um, take a step forward in to the idea of opera being something in which human emotions are being transported. And any tool that I can use to enhance that emotion um, transport is something that's worthwhile pursuing. And um, I've done live blue screen and live chroma keying performances on stage and I've seen how that empowers the public to have a hybrid of perspective. He has his perspective from his viewpoint where one seat in the theatre has a specific viewpoint. And in a production where, for example, I would have actors acting live in front of a green screen, they have the possibility of seeing how it is being made at the same time as the result. And already that is also an interesting crossroads between truth and fiction. And uh, sometimes they don't know where to look. Am I looking at how they are making the, the trick or how the result of the trick is being made? And also that is a form of theatrical communication. I um, love live theatre and I love the idea of performing live. But in a time where this corona restrictions have taken the stage from us, um, if we then want to use a virtual stage and a virtual um, way of communication, um, why not adapt our way of staging to uh, be in sync with that time? Um, the third title of, uh, of you, your project here is going from uh, hell to heaven, so to speak. Um, yes, it, it originated because I wanted to show two ways of doing things. Um, here, for example, on the screen, you see a very realistic environment. You see an environment in which the computer is trying to give you an idea of what real trees, real grass, real mountains look like. But that's not the only way one can go with these engines. I did a staging of the John's Passion in Soweto, and so I took that idea and I built a virtual room of what something of that production could have been like had we had projectors that were 50,000 ANSI lumen. We had projectors that were 2,000 ANSI lumen. So now I, I painted pictures digitally onto the wall as if though that production in Soweto would have had a huge amount of money, and I created a virtual space which calls back to the real space that we had. So in a sense, it's also a form of virtual reality. But I wanted to show that doing um, opera in a virtual space does not bind you to a specific aesthetic. Of course, there's a wide range of, uh, of aesthetics that you can create within, this, within these tools. And this project just illustrates um, two arias. One in a very stylized black and white way in which um, the room is already an interpretation of a stylized room. And the other um, set in Arcadia, set in the Elysian fields where the gods are happy and everybody just um, uh, fool around with each other because nobody has a job even although there's no corona in Arcadia. Um, uh, and there this uh, realistic, um, photorealistic environment um, to just showcase the different possibilities. The, the, this project is a lot about education, it's a lot about outreach, and it's not really as much uh, a finished product than it is a uh, window into a new world, into new possibilities, and a proof of concept, which uh, I hope will make people interested in trying out it uh, for themselves, and uh, at least to uh, peek behind the, the curtain and see um, what happens behind the stage as well.